We're here at the Imetric Summit, Washington, D.C. I'm uh, Daniel Weisberg. I'm here with uh, John Lovett. He's a center partner at uh, Web Analytics Demystified. Welcome, John. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. So you have been to several Imetric Summits, and you have been in the field since memorable times. And would you share with us something that you saw especially interesting this summit? Well, one of the things that... Uh, for this particular eMetrics DC in uh, 2010, one of the things that I really appreciated hearing was from the keynote speakers, and there was more than one of them that did this. Essentially, they shared a lot about their organizations. Uh, specifically, I'm thinking about Bob Page, who really told us how he's using data at eBay, uh, told us about the ways in which their team was structured and organized, uh, told us about uh, the way that they're using data to drive forward their business, um, and, and that's such great insight that companies can take away and say, wow, this is how a huge organization like eBay does it. Um, and, th and that was just really revealing. And it takes um, the ability to share that information um, is, is, truly, is truly something that practitioners can walk away from. The same thing happened with Dell this morning during, during their keynote session. Uh, three members of the Dell team talked about how they've built up a structure of a data-driven culture and how they've used process to be able to uh, build a testing program within the Dell organization that really relies on data analytics and metrics to move that business forward. And just the ability to the sharing that's happened um, has been really fabulous at this at this particular metrics. In addition to all of the other networking that I always personally get out of these events, um, just hearing some really great content. Right. So I once read a very interesting research that you wrote while uh, you were at Forrester. Mm -hmm. uh, it was about the uh, relevance and also about behavioral targeting. So how can we make our websites more relevant to our users? Well, so that's that's a that's a great question, and, and uh, my philosophy for philosophy for a long time has been that websites cannot be uh, general one size fits all, and that the the experience of a website relies on data and understanding customers' behavior. So, if a person visits a website for the first time, the ability to present information to them in such a way that it's um, it's, in, it's intuitive and you're getting the right information is important, but more importantly, if they revisit that site and go back again and again, the ability to cater that experience, to customize that experience based on their past behaviors and their implicit behaviors to know which directions they're going towards, whether they're looking to make a transaction on the commerce site, whether they're seeking out information on a content site, whatever the web property might be, really the ability to understand user behavior, both implicit and explicit, to be able to uh, use the technologies to deliver dynamic content and really a better experience such that uh, the, the technologies can actually anticipate what the user is looking for and make sure that that information is in their path as they go through the pages of the websites. Excellent. Very interesting. So, as a member, we, we just saw we, we were on the, the Web Analytics Association uh, member meeting. Mm -hmm. And would you share with us what the association is doing to foster the field and what we as members can do to, to help you? Yeah, so, I mean, really the, um, the Web Analytics Association of the WAA um, really making a strong effort to champion the cause for what it is that we all do. Um, and that's to both benefit the industry as well as make people outside of the industry aware of all the great things that the association does, that the WAA does. So really it's about uh, fostering education, uh, delivering standards, uh, developing research, um, really all these things that we can educate the community about ways in which we are using data to move businesses forward, ways in which we are uh, concerned about things like privacy. Uh, right now we're actively developing a code of ethics whereby we're asking web analysts to sign up and say, I promise to be ethical in my ways of collecting data and using data within my organizations such that we will not compromise consumer privacy. Uh, the, the WAA is behind efforts like that to make sure that we have some consistency, that we uh, ensure our longevity as an industry, and really that we can make sure that uh, what we all do and love in terms of web analytics um, is able to continue in the ways in which we're, we're delivering it right now. Excellent. So, as a very long time researcher and, researcher and consultant, how do you see the analytics industry moving forward with all the acquisitions and the big players getting to it? Yeah, so, so th this is an interesting one because certainly there have been uh, a number of acquisitions uh, in the web analytics space. 
And um, I, I said it uh, over, over a year ago that uh, web analytics is, in my belief, destined to become an integrated service. And by and large, it's there. It, by integrated service, I mean uh, the data collection, the reporting, and the analysis becomes fundamental to an enterprise or to any business, a business of any size, really. Um, the, the data is used to make decisions. Analysts look at the data to derive insights, and with those insights, they can make recommendations to their or to their companies and their businesses. And really, that's kind of the future of where it's going. Is that web analytics tools, because they're being acquired by companies like Adobe and IBM, are really becoming ingrained within the business. So rather than going out and doing web analytics, web analytics becomes pervasive, and it's part of everyone's job. And it might be such that people don't necessarily know they're using web analytics. But when the data becomes accessible to them in their everyday jobs and they can use it to make decisions, that, that's really when we've arrived at a data-driven environment or, or culture that, that foster that. It, it's, it's very hard to get there. Um, there's a, sort of a fallacy today about data-driven environments because most aren't. Even if they think they are, um, the ability to use data to make those decisions, um, it, it's a very challenging thing to be able to accomplish. But when it becomes pervasive, when it becomes part of everyone's daily activities, that's, I think, where we are headed towards. Um, and then the whole spectrum of uh, being able to use technologies for people to communicate with one another, to communicate with the brands that they interact with, whether it's social or uh, uh, commerce or informational, whatever it might be, but the ability for the technologies and the humans to have the experience that's um, both relevant, timely, informative, and intuitive, um, that's kind of where I see all this headed. Great. So first, I'd like to thank you for uh, for all the great research you, you published on the blog, uh, on the Web Analytics Demystified blog, which is very interesting. Thank you. And thank you for, for, uh, for the interview. My pleasure. Yeah, thank you.